Hello all, welcome to the Diffuse Filter Challenge video tutorial. Um, here's my layout that I made utilizing this, and it may not look to you like there's any filter work on here at all, but the filter work is in the photos, and I actually have um, in the forum already a before and an after shot. Here's the original photo, and uh, you can see um, it's kind of dull and then uh, my after photo down here you can see where the white um, is kind of glowing on here and really popping off the page uh, really to bring the attention to the photo it's almost an angelic like um, look and so uh, you'll see down here uh, some uh, uh, that uh, Rachel, who is uh, no longer designing, did, um, and you can see what a difference it made on his face. Um, and also, um, here's the original of her uh, baby and after, so makes a real um, artistic looking result and so um, this is my layout. Now I don't have my original photos because um, I did this so long ago um, back in 07 <laughs> when I originally did this layout um, and I don't have the original photos in here only the after photos so I have some uh, photos here that I've already opened up to begin playing with to show you how this filter works now this photo I really like I got it's one of my favorites that I've gotten recently um, of uh, the water park and I happened to sit down on the steps as I was getting out and I saw the lighting and I was like wow and as soon as I stood up to go get my camera the lighting went away so I knew I had to be sitting in that spot in order to take uh, this photo and I ended up um, sitting down on the concrete and trying to lean down anyway so this photo the reason I chose it is because it has a lot of um, highlights in it the diffuse filter the way it works is that it um, detects the highlights in your photo and um, blends with those now this filter does um, work with the background color and so you might want to you know hit D on your keyboard to make your background color um, black and white because it works best and is most successful with white but we will show you later how you can play with it and maybe utilize uh, other colors you can do whatever you want but it's most successful with the white or if you think about it it's it's called glow and so you know if a uh, lighting glows it's going to be white or maybe an off yellow um, to find where the highlights are in your photo if you really want to just go at this and play and see what happens you can do that but um, to learn what it do actually does you have to think about um, what where the highlights are in your photo now the highlights are going to be your whites not your darks so um, naturally in here um, over here is the dark area on the left um, it's not going to do much to that area of this photo but where you have the highlights on the water or up here this water falling down here or the light that's where this filter is going to have an effect and so to find um, and visualize that a little better if you go to the new adjustment layer icon and choose threshold you can see it immediately turns to an average where your highlights are and where they aren't. Um, and I want you to kind of watch this slider. As I move it to the right, it selects only the most highlighted areas. And um, as you go on down, you can see where the most you see I pointed out um, on the tops of the water and some of the water coming down in the light so those are the most white or most highlighted areas in this image you know and the further I go to the left um, the more it brings in and adds to it the less highlighted areas now that's going to be important for you to observe and I'll show you why here 
in just a moment. Let's go ahead and delete this threshold layer and I'm going to duplicate Control J the background layer so I'm not messing up my original first layer and have something to go back to because of course the filters are permanent changes. Filter drop down menu, distort, diffuse glow. And it's taking a moment to come up. I think it'll run faster the next time I do it. There we go. And um, you, as you see, it brings up the the uh, the filter gallery. So if we wanted to stack these, we could. And so you could think about that and get creative in that way. Um, take this back out so we can see the whole thing. Right now. Um, the most important slider here is this one that says clear amount and this is the one that relates to the threshold one that I was just showing you. So right now um, mine is all the way to the right and so right now the glow, the white background, light, uh, background color that I chose, the glow is only affecting those most white areas and as I slide it to the left it begins to let it process a little bit include more you see how more of the areas here are highlighted and even more um, as I slide more to the left and you can see it works similarly to the way um, that threshold is working so now we're really getting um, some softness coming in there and so this is all, all what you want to do with this effect I mean, I can really go, you know, all the way to the left, and it turns the thing all white because it includes even the black areas. Um, this, uh, you know, looks more like a lowered opacity photo there. Um, so you see how the clear slider works by observing that threshold. Um, now the glow amount, I'm going to turn this down and we will watch what the glow amount does. And uh, d down here is the lower level where it, it's not going to glow very much. And um, let's just drastically go up and watch what it does. And there you can see um, how it just uh, whited everything out. And so this is how you can analyze this to utilize it to get that effect that you want and then you can add a little graininess to your photo if you want let's go way up and see what that does that just adds grain and I'm not a big grain fan in fact I'd almost keep it all the way down myself uh, but that is up to you so um, let's see stack it what happens that one down and this one up you see I'm almost losing it all but you know that even might make a nice background um, doing something like that uh, let's go ahead and you can see how you can play with it and uh, I want to use a clearer mount and a little bit more With a little less glow and I'm going to hit OK and let that process and then um, you can see there's the before and there's the after. It gives a whole different effect. Now um, remember from here you can always um, play with the blending modes to see what other kind of effects you can get. Um, that's going to uh, be uh, making it even more dramatic look here before and after the really highlight the, the that that looks pretty cool looks like it's even in the dark and and that was using the multiply um, here's a pin light just really brightens it up so you can do a lot with this to make your photos um, really do some cool things doesn't or saturation doesn't change anything oh 
yuck don't like that one anyway let's don't like that one I have to leave it on something that looks good let's go to the next one and look at how it works with uh, faces control J to duplicate my layer and I'm leaving the background color white for this instance we'll play with a different color on the next photo and let's go to open this up I knew it would come up faster the second time and look what it does to the faces <laughs> so um, obviously having a lower or a higher amount on the clear is going to be helpful and a less glow for flat faces but it does kind of give um, what they call a uh, high um, oh, I'll think of it here in a minute uh, a high look something a high key look a high key look it gives a really high key look uh, that seems to be a um, popular um, thing with the photos right now so I'm going to bump this clear mount up just a little bit more to make it look bad here and click OK and you can see um, really it's washed out my face but when we use our blending modes you can see it before and after. It really gives a high key. Let's try hard light. See, that's a little too much for me. Soft light. Okay, before and after. Really gives a high key, what they're calling uh, um, as the trend out there right now, a high key look to the photos. It really makes them pop and stand out um, from uh, the previous photo. So that's how you can utilize it with faces. Now let's look at the next one. I have a scenery color. Um, let's see. Enhance auto color correct. Okay, I want to do that first. I'm going to get rid of this layer where I was playing and duplicate it. Now um, uh, I'm going to choose for the background color a blue color. Let's say I wanted to um, get out this pretty kind of uh, blue to enhance it. Um, and then before I do that, I'm going to uh, take a moment to observe the threshold. And you see right now um, the whole sky and all of the water is affected and the dock and I actually laid out there in the dock and, <laughs> and did some sunning. But if we go to the right, you see how it brings out and only highlights less and less of the water and you keep going to the right until it really only affects the sky and some of the sun shining on the dock. Um, and then it goes all the way to where there's hardly any sky. So just make an observance and go ahead and delete that. Now let's go play. Um, filter, distort, diffuse glow, and let's um, fit in view. Now you can see right now the whole thing is blue except for down here in this uh, the greenery area. If I went all the way to the right the whole thing would turn blue. And so we want to affect just the whites or the highlights and the more I go to the right just as in the threshold um, the less that's affected and so I kind of want to get just mostly the sky and then some of this water in here and I don't really want a high glow amount bit more and I don't like the graininess okay so you can see it's affected the dock too I'll click OK now that's not you know a very good image <laughs> at all so this is a case where those blending modes will need to be utilized to uh, make this even better and as soon as I hit overlay you can see the difference that it makes
before and after. It really makes this layout go pow now. Um, we can try, uh, I think this is where I did the hard light before. Oh, uh, that didn't work very good. Soft light. Just by doing that, it really makes a big difference in the before or after. Multiply. Now, that's kind of a cool looking thing, but I would have to lower the opacity on that one. And then I would probably want to brighten it up. So, um, before and after. Kind of cool. And uh, let's see, a couple more blending modes. See, screen didn't work very well. Um, Ooh, look at the effect the difference gives. And uh, the color brings some color into the sky and the water, the color blending mode. So um, that's how uh, you can use these. And I'm going to actually play and do it two different ones. Uh, and use these to make your photos um, pop and, and do something, uh, some fun editing with your photos. So um, you might want to try these with your papers too, uh, or just a tag, or I don't know. Get out there and test it on everything and see what happens and um, make your photos pop. And I look forward to seeing what you can do.